What do S-beaners, N-fed half-waves, and telescopic mass have in common? What are the many, many uses for the Anderson power pole connector? Charge controllers. Where should you connect the load? This time on Mailbag Monday. What is happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to Mailbag Monday. My name is Mike. You are watching KMRD Radio Stuff. If you're new to the channel or just haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It gives you a real warm feeling down in the cockles of your heart. Guys, if you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email, kmrd at icloud.com, and uh, just put Mailbag Monday on the subject, and maybe you will be featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Guys, we got three great questions this week. Let's dive right in. This first viewer writes... I just purchased a DX Commander Expedition travel mask to start using my NFED half-wave antenna some more during my POTA activations and for other times where I can't do my usual setup. When you drilled the hole in the black S-beaner, did you size it for the very top of the mast or the second from the top section? Uh, and if you remember, what was the drill bit size that you used? So first off, congratulations on your uh, DX Commander purchase. It is a hell of a mast. So to answer your question, let's hop over to that workbench right there and I will show you. Now what he is referring to is this S-beaner and how I use this to hoist the antenna up in the air. They start off like this. You can see they have some holes in there, but I go ahead and drill another hole in the center. And the purpose of that is because I will typically use my DX Commander mast and I will use this to slide it over like such and now I can get this up in the air. I do this to every single end fed that I uh, have. Sometimes you have the smaller mast and you can feed, this is the soda beams mast, you can feed the mast through one of these tiny holes in here, like such, but I needed something to use for the bigger mast. So I put on my engineering hat and got my drill out, specifically, a 9 64th drill bit and I drilled a hole in the center of it like this first get vice second put s beaner in vice third use small 16th inch drill bit to drill pilot hole like such next insert larger drill bit drill hole like such. Now you have successfully completed the drilling the hole in the S beaner. And just like that, now you are an expert at drilling and sizing your S beaners for atop your DX Commander or other portable telescopic masts. Thanks for writing in. Next, <laughs> you should not have written. This young new ham asks, I'm really new to the ham radio world and looking for ideas on all the ways I could be using power poles as a standard for all my stuff. Uh, nothing real specific, just gen generic ideas. I just remember using power poles for lots of stuff, so I was going to use that uh, to trigger ideas for my setup. Maybe power poles on HD chargers or from the power supply to radios, jumpers in the field, battery to radios, that kind of stuff. Oh boy. I hope you're ready. This is a very deep and dark rabbit hole we are about to embark on. But my friend, you have come to the right place as I am happy to show you the many, many uses for the Anderson power pole. But we're not gonna do it sitting at this table. We're gonna have to go elsewhere. So Mike, why don't you show us all the uses of the Anderson power pole? Take it away. Before we dive too deep into the many uses of the Anderson power pole, I want to take a quick second to talk about the anatomy of the power pole. So in amateur radio, we're typically going to use one of three different power poles. They're all going to use the same housing, but we have three different sizes. We have a 15 amp, a 30 amp, and a 45 amp. And the only difference in these is simply the size wire that's going to fit in them. They're all going to fit the same housing, okay? Typically the 30 amp and the 45 are the most common ones that I use every now and again. If I've got a smaller wire, I'll use the 30. To keep everything consistent, it's important to understand how we want to put these housings together. You'll notice there's little circles on the top and there's an A, and that's actually a counterfeit one. We learned that last week. But we want to orient these. Red is on the right and the A is up, okay? That's how we're gonna stay consistent across the board with all of our power poles. Red, right, a up for every power pole, okay? Now, let's talk about the many uses of these wonderful Anderson power poles. 
Also, do yourself a favor, get yourself a good ratcheting power pole crimper. It's important to note that every cable that you get from any bit of electronics in the 12 volt universe should immediately be put with an Anderson power pole. Regardless of what connector is on there currently, cut it off, put an Anderson power pole. This is the wire for my ICOM 7300. Power pole the world. Why do I have this separated? Well, maybe I have an inline watt meter like this and I want to measure how much power is going through the wire and how much current my radio is using. Now I have an inline watt meter there because of the Anderson power pole. Maybe you've got some zip line laying around and you can make some jumper cables. Maybe you have a power source that's farther away from where your radio is so you need a longer cable. Maybe you have an old lamp that died. Salvage the wire, put a power pole on it. Now you have another ex uh, extension cord. Maybe you make yourself a fancy battery box and solar charger. You've got a yellow power pole on the top for the solar in. That's right, they come in multiple colors. And then you can power your devices off of any of these other power pole outlets here. You can also use these for charging. Speaking of charging, got a lithium iron phosphate battery, put a power pole on it. And now, because you have a power pole on your charger as well, you can charge your battery using a power pole. Now by this point, you're probably saying, but Mike, now that I have all these power poles, what about distribution? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. There's many different distribution blocks that exist, like this one from PowerWorks. This is an eight power pole distribution block where you can plug in your power source into any one of these power poles and feed seven other devices off of the other power poles. Maybe you wanna move up from that. Maybe you can get yourself a good fused Anderson power pole distribution block like this one from Ham Radio Workbench. Speaking of workbenches, they also make distribution boxes like this MFJ1107 that you can mount to your workbench and power all of your devices off of those power poles. Or maybe you need something bigger, like this ginormous 12 port power pole distribution block from MFJ. This is the MFJ1128. Got a solar panel? Put a power pole on it. Got multiple solar panels? Link them together with your Anderson power pole distribution block for more solar power. Did you know the Anderson power pole can also be used to link your audio connections? This is coming from the speaker in the front of my car and going back to the speaker input of the ASU 891 so I can hear this radio all the way up in the front of my car. What about our portable 12 volt appliances like this 12 volt refrigerator? Yeah, <laughs> that's right, Timmy. We're gonna use an Anderson power pole for that too. Now what about HTs you ask? Well, some of them, like my Yesu VX7R, charge off of 12 volts, so we can simply plug our charging cable in, and now we are charging. Other handheld radios, like this Ilons HD1 or this soon-to-be-released TID Radio GMRS radio, have a 12 volt charging station that we can simply use our power poles to plug in to our 12 volt devices. Now do be warned, just like ham radio, the Anderson power pole in and of itself is a sick, sick disease. And once you catch it, there is no cure. So be prepared for the Anderson Power Pole to take over your life, just as Ham Radio hopefully has as well. But hopefully that answers the question. You can use them for damn near anything. So awesome. I uh, thank you so much for writing. Welcome to the wonderful hobby of amateur radio and welcome to Anderson Power Poles. Thanks so much for writing in again. Appreciate it. And lastly, we have a question regarding where to connect the load on your solar charge controller. This viewer says, Mike, I finally got around to getting all the components for my LifePo 4 build. Got a 20 amp hour bioeno with a solar charger. My question is when wiring up the solar charger, do you recommend using the load side of the charger? Is it beneficial to wire it up using the load on the charger or does it even really matter? I've watched videos where this was not recommended. I believe I have figured out the wiring to get around uh, using it. Just wanted your opinion on the matter. Thanks. Oh, and by the way, I have to say that Master of Puppets is the best Metallica album. I think I probably would agree with you there. And uh, although CDs are obsolete, I feel the CD that has been in my car for God knows how long is Master of Puppets. Now, to answer your question on the solar charge controller, I use BioNO charge controllers, and if you go to their website and download the manual, you will see that they, in fact, do not recommend using the load from the charge controller. They, they recommend taking the load directly from the battery. Now, I'm gonna hop over to the bench there, 
and show you a little bit about how I have my battery box wired. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I just want to show you and hopefully uh, shed a little bit of light on there. Again, I have no idea why they don't recommend using it. Uh, it, it is rated for 20 amps out of that load uh, on the charge controller, but I guess it's probably just best practice to pull current from the battery makes sense. That's the power source. So anyway, let's hop over on the bench and I'll show you the inner workings of Big Geek a little bit. Now here is a rare glimpse inside of my battery box Big Geek. This is the BioNO charge controller that I use and you can see this is the load port and there is nothing plugged into that. I don't use it. These uh, two wires here are coming in from the solar panel from the power pole port that I have on the front. This is going directly to the battery, but it is going through this switch just so uh, I can turn this off. If this were just hardwired to the battery, it would stay on and drain the battery. And then from the switch, the power wire is going to this fuse right here. And the energy from here will either, uh, it'll either just go to your load, whatever you're powering, or it will go into the battery, whichever, uh, whichever flow uh, is less because it's going to find the path of least resistance. So if, if there's less than uh, the load that this is putting out being pulled from the battery, it's going to go into the battery. But if there's more than that, it'll take from the battery uh, or it'll take rather, uh, say I'm getting five amps of current out of this and I have a 10 amp load, it'll take five amps from the charge controller basically and the other five amps from the battery. So that's kind of how that works. Now, why they say to not use this, I don't know, but they don't recommend it, so I don't do. Never have. Can you plug something in here? Yes. You know, I, I, if, if you did, I would make it like a lower current type of thing, but that's just, that's what BioNO recommends. That's what I did, and that's what I would rec recommend uh, you do too. So do that. And there you have it. So hopefully that sheds a little bit of light on that subject. Um, maybe do some research on it and find out why we don't uh, want to plug it in there. Uh, to the load side and report back to me. I'll expect a full report by next Mailbag Monday. But uh, it is a great question. Thank you for writing in, and I do appreciate it. And that is going to bring an end to this Mailbag Monday, number 31. Guys, if you have a question for me, amateur radio related, shoot me an email, knmrd at icloud.com. Just throw Mailbag Monday in the subject, that way I see it. Maybe you will have your question featured on Mailbag Monday. Guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at knmrd, and we will see you again on another episode of knmrd radio stuff. 73, guys.